Hello, everybody, and welcome to Mastering Life Shorts webinar 20. Today, we're going to be talking about dopamine, quite a misunderstood chemical. So back in the day, uh, Forrest Gump said life is like a box of chocolates. And yes, it is, but uh, possibly not in the way that uh, he was expecting. So I'm going to be talking about why chocolates, especially the, the sort of selection type, uh, really work with dopamine. They're very, very clever. Okay, so our story, as often these things do, starts on the plains of Africa. And if we think back to what we needed back in the day when uh, human beings evolved, we needed to work together as groups, we needed to find high calorie foods. Uh, so we needed fat and we needed sugar and we needed salt as well. And we needed to find them fast and we needed to go and get them. Now, uh, the way that the biology works, uh, very, very briefly, you have genes that code for behavior. If you have a particular behavior, it could either increase the survival rate of the organism or decrease the survival rate of the organism. If it increases it, then the genes are passed to future generations. If it doesn't, it's lost. And then the genes can go back uh, with or without mutation to the next generation. Okay, so we have a load of genes from the past. Now, the problem is that some of these genes are still in our bodies, expecting us to be in a pl the place of scarcity on the plains of Africa. And they, the, the, the genes and what they're coding for have, have been hacked by modern day life. So uh, what's the link between genes and what we do? So in our, uh, our genes code for the neural circuitry in, uh, in our heads, and it codes for the neurotransmitters, those chemicals that move around in our heads. They become thoughts, which become feelings. And when we get those feelings, we then do things. So I feel scared, so I move away. I feel hungry, I move towards some food. I've mentioned this neurotransmitter things a few times and I, I debated how much detail to go into, but essentially all you need to know about neurotransmitters for the purposes of this is that there are several chemicals in your brain that link the different neurons in your brain uh, and different chemicals are involved in different circuits. They're triggered at different points. Now, there are certain neurotransmitters that really exist what's within what's known as the peripersonal space. So those that's the space that you can reach with your hands. Uh, so about a meter either side of us. So things like serotonin, which uh, affects um, mood and, anxi and, and uh, anxiety. Oxytocin, which affects warmth and bonding, endorphins, which come from pleasure and satisfaction. You get those from having food that you're next to and eating it or being next to people and holding them or making love to them or making babies with them or whatever. All of these things happen within that space. None of that encouraged us to go outside our own space to plan into the future. All of that is very much about the present. Dopamine is different from all of those other neurotransmitters in that it focuses on what's further away. Dopamine is the chemical, for example, that's involved with uh, us learning that if I went to a certain tree at a certain time of year and there was a certain fruit on it, if I take that fruit, then I get pleasure when I eat it and it gives me loads of calories and therefore it's a good thing. And I needed something that was involved in learning that and then moving forwards towards it. Now, the way dopamine works in your brain is it moves in four pathways. One of them isn't on here because it's involved in lactation and it's not really important for this particular story. Uh, but the other three are really important for uh, for, for, for learning and pleasure and, and going to get things. So, for example, taking my, my idea of, of uh, the fruit on the tree, you've got the pleasure system. So when I take this fruit from the tree, I eat it, it feels really good, I then have to encode that in my brain. I have the movement and sensory stimulation. So I actually go to the tree, I you know do all the movements I need to to get this fruit, 
to bite the fruit and then the, all the pleasures and sem- simulate, uh, stimulation of my, my senses and eating it and smelling it. And then I have the learning and behavioral um, pathways in the brain, which encode it. So I remember to do it again and again and again. Now, the important thing about these pathways is that they're a bit like paths on, on, I don't know, in the open country, that if you walk down a pathway once, there might be a tiny little indent in grass. The more you walk down that pathway, the stronger it becomes. And just like uh, if you've ever gone on the motorway when some big truck has gone when it's been a bit hot and there's the pathways are, are, uh, are sort of pushed into the road, the deeper the pathway, the harder it is to get out of it. So we find that there are some pathways in our brains, especially in modern day life, that are really, really deeply rooted. And it's very, very difficult to change, change out of those pathways. Sometimes it's great if you've got the pathway that says eating healthy food is good for you. That's a great thing. Uh, if it's bad food, bad thing. Now, a lot of people think that dopamine is the pleasure uh, chemical. And that came from this experiment. So you get a mouse, uh, a rat, and you put uh, uh, things in its brain to measure the amount of dopamine. You then walk up to the cage, you open the cage, and you plop in some food. And the, the, the rat eats the food, and you measure a spike of dopamine. And everyone, when they first did this, they went, ah, excellent. So this tells us that dopamine gives you pleasure. And you'll see this written again and again and again across uh, books all over the place. Dopamine is the pleasure molecule. It's not. We'll come back to that. What's going on in the brain here? Again, exactly the same thing. So the mouse is, uh, the rat is noticing that it uh, moves towards something and then it learns that when the person comes towards it, then it gets pleasure. And it needs to move towards that thing, uh, to, towards that that uh, pellet. So the the the, mal- the the rat over time, as this happens again and again and again, will get these pathways that are laid down in its brain, telling it as soon as someone moves towards me, opens the cage, I'm going to go go. If I move towards the center of the cage, get that pellet, I'm going to get the pleasure I need from food. That's the original. So. Mouse gets a new pellet, it's novel, and it eats it, gets the dopamine spike. But what happens next is the interesting thing. Once it's learnt that it gets pleasure from eating something, it then starts to anticipate. And that's when the mouse or the rat starts to get the dopamine spike. So actually, when the pellet is then dropped in, the food pellet is dropped in, it's eating it, Dopamine goes back to normal. Dopamine is not the pleasure neurotransmitter. Dopamine is the anticipatory neurotransmitter. It's about looking for expected reward. Now, in modern day life, we get expected reward all over the place. So milkshake or ice cream or cake are actually incredibly artificial. There are very, very few places in the natural world where you get sugar and fat in the same food. The only probable exception is milk, if you think about it. Most of the time they don't exist together. So when we eat milkshake, we get pleasure. And therefore, when we see milkshake, we get that anticipatory uh, spike of of dopamine, or when we see cake, uh, that makes us feel really good and then makes us go towards eating that, that food. It might be bad for us though. But we've got that that, uh, pathway laid down in our brain that says, if I go towards cake, it's going to make me feel good. Gamblers have the same problem. A gambler doesn't get a spike from the reward. A gambler gets a spike from the anticipated reward, the expected reward. Now, if the National Lottery didn't have a £10, one in every 50 or whatever it is, uh, reward, no one would do the National Lottery. If it was a one in a million, no one's going to bother. What happens really cleverly in gambling is they give you enough rewards every now and then to make you get that little 
anticipatory spike of dopamine that makes you feel really good and you go back and you do it again and again because you like that dopamine your brain enjoys feeling that dopamine uh, spike that's why people get addicted to gambling it's not because of the reward it's because the anticipation of the reward is what they're addicted to incidentally talking about addiction i'm not going to go into drugs but essentially things like cocaine stop the dopamine from going back and being taken away out of the synapses so you stay really happy and that's why cocaine is really uh, addictive too now revels are probably the cleverest suite going, uh, seconded only by the quality streets I said earlier. Because if you put your hand into a bottle, uh, for those people who don't know, Revels are a UK suite that there's loads of different uh, fillings to the Revels. There's, there's chocolate and there's raisin and there's uh, coffee and there's an orange one that no one ever likes. I have never met a single person who likes the orange revel. But that's not the point. The point is when you put your hand in, you might get the really tasty uh, chocolate one or you might get the orange one. But your anticipation is there and you don't know what the reward's going to be. So you get a little bit of a hit. Now, this is the most important sentence. If we think reward is giving up random and checking the reward comes at little cost, then by doing it, by, by keep doing that thing, by checking, we end up really writing that pathway and we end up checking habitually. Where does this happen? Smartphones. Come back to that in a minute. There is a problem with this whole system, though, and that is what happens if what you get isn't what you anticipated. So we've had the mouse who's got a new uh, pellet and it's very happy dopamine spike we get the mouse has learned that when someone walks up to it it gets the pellet so it gets the dopamine spike when it's uh, anticipating and then it's happy when it's eating what about the one that the scientist walks up goes and then walks away without putting in the pellet of food what actually happens is you get a loss of dopamine, a, de a negative amount of dopamine, and that feels really bad. Now, what we know is that when you first get um, a smartphone and you start getting those notifications, it happened to me uh, not, not very long ago, I, I, uh, jo I joined Instagram. And the first few notifications, the first few follows on Instagram were great. They made me feel really good. I got massive dopamine spikes. After a while, it's like, I'm not getting anything from these followers. They're not, it doesn't mean anything to me. So actually I start going, okay, the reward's not as good as it was promised. Now, what normally then happens is that the uh, the, the pathway starts to wear, wear away. And, you know, if you, you start to eat a food that you taste and you go, actually, this isn't as good as it was, was supposed to be, you stop going for it. That's why when you're a kid, you love fast, you know, Big Macs or whatever. And as an adult, you start going, eh, okay, they're fine, but they're not, they're not as exciting as they, they, they seem to be. So what businesses do is they do everything they can to keep our anticipation so high that it doesn't matter how good the reward is that we feel good. That's why you get milkshakes that look like that because you're getting such a big anticipatory dopamine spike that you go wow this feels really good the fact that the, the milkshake tastes rubbish afterwards doesn't matter because you've already had the, all the pleasure you only need to go back three or four times and look at them there's so many different ones so maybe the the, the one with the colored hundreds and thousands didn't taste great but the brownie one might so i'll keep going back and spending a fortune on stupid milkshakes that are going to make me a beast Social media companies know that when you get that little round notification uh, signal, then then yeah, it, it, it feels okay for a while, but mm, after a while you realize it's not that great. So what they do, apparently Instagram have started holding back likes. So you put a post out and you're waiting for that social validation. And at first you might get the dopamine spike and after a time you go, it's like, well, where has it gone? It's not there, no one loves me. And then they'll flood you with all the likes. And that extra flooding with the likes makes you feel really good. So you get that random reward, massive dopamine spike, feels really good. So they keep you in the system by keeping you going back. 
Similarly with, you know, email, you keep going back, you hear that ping, you know that it's likely to be spam, but it might be the one day that Richard Branson decided to send you his millions. Unlikely, but, you know, it might one day happen. Now, briefly, uh, because I know I'm running out of time, uh, what happens when you try to detox yourself from bad food is a really interesting story that can also help us to understand about social media. So when you eat normal, natural, whole food, you have a natural amount of dopamine in your body. So you know what you're getting. After, If you then go off and eat junk food, you get a dopamine spike. And that dopamine spike feels really good. So when you see a new burger or a pizza or something, you're like, hey, that's going to be great. Your body then starts to realize it's actually not as good as it was. It, it promised to be. Yeah, it had loads of fat and sugar, but it didn't really feel great afterwards. So you start getting used to it. The problem then comes when you go back to natural food because your body isn't getting the same calories per bite as you started with. And so you actually get a dopamine low if you try to come straight off uh, junk food onto natural food. And over time, over a few days, your body will just re readjust itself and will get back to normal. But it's this, spot, this drop here that is the problem. So what they say that you should do is instead of going from junk food to natural food, you take a day of drinking nothing but water. If you drink nothing but water for a day, you'll feel so rubbish that when you eat a salad, your body will be like, hell yeah, this is great. I'm going to eat this. Uh, and this feels really good. And you trick your dopamine system. Similarly, with uh, social media, it would be exactly the same. If you have no social media, no dopamine spikes, you feel great. You join social media, dopamine spike feels really good. As you continue to use it, levels out, becomes boring. If you withdraw, then your hand is like, I need to check my Instagram on my Twitter and everything. And it takes some time for your dopamine levels to go back to normal. So actually going cold turkey is probably the only way of doing it or being at, at least being very, very aware that you're going to go through that withdrawal period where you feel a bit shitty because you don't have that, ha that thing in your hand that's just giving you those mini little spikes of possible anticipation. Okay, as always for this, I've got a worksheet. It's quite a simple worksheet this week. Uh, just talking about what you're actually anticipating, where you're getting that those dopamine spikes, and then where you can detox yourself. So really making you think about this. So you can download that from my website, englishleathermaster.com forward slash mastering hyphen life hyphen shorts. Password this week is detox with a capital D. And as always, I would love you if you uh, also go on my website, go and have a look at uh, my, my ebook, Mastering Life, which has got more of these sorts of things, more information on how to be uh, a, a, a LGBT plus or kinky and living a great life that's, uh, that, that really you move forwards to your best life. Or you can uh, book a free coaching session and we can talk about anything you like and move your life forward. So I'd love to speak to you. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about negative self-talk, that little voice in the back of our heads that seems to be really angry with us all the time with whatever we do. So I'm looking forward to talking to you about that. Uh, have a great week and see you then. Bye-bye.